All right, so warning graphic. If you're going to look away, look away now because my smallest beaver ever. <laughs> I mean, that's my, it fit on there. That's the smallest size you can get on the board there. And it probably could have went about a half an inch down on the, on all around. So you just, just fit on there. But not too bad. I did the legs pretty good. I'll show you this stuff. Uh, this one came out really nice. Uh, this one was hard to do. This one was fighting me. And you just tie them on. Uh, so what they do at the fur auction later on, when the, the fur the garment makers get it, they got like this big hole punch and they just cut out all the legs. So make them as small as you can. You don't want them really tight. Uh, in fact, you can see here, it's just, it's not really tight. You want some slack in there because it's gonna tighten up a lot. Now this one's gonna dry really quickly. This is really nicely fleshed. Uh, some of my best work, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get better. And I found out a nice little trick on the, on the get the meat around the, uh, off the that and I cut off the lip and stuff like that uh, but this is clean right to the very edge so except for here I could have got a little bit more off of that but I'm going to cut that off anyway so it don't matter but you know uh, but that is a very nice pelt it's a really nice pelt very prime um, that's what it looks like right now uh, tomorrow it's going to be a lot darker and uh, a lot drier and it's pretty pretty much followed the shape not too bad uh, sometimes you can't get them perfect, perfect, perfect. But uh, when they're that small and they barely fit on the... I like them a little more looser fitting than that. Uh, the goal is fur density. So as it dries, I mean, this one's still... You know, it's not like tight, 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 tight. But I mean, it was just just enough to fit them on the, on the stretcher. That's how small this guy is. That one was, I think, 15 pounds. A 15 pound beaver. Is a, so that's pretty small. But uh, the legs look okay. Everything looks good. Everything was fleshed good. Uh, it'll dry fairly quick. Um, usually you want... The, I got two uh, schools of thought on this. They always say dry the first with the, the head down so the, the grease and everything runs off the nose if it gets warm or whatever. But then if there's any water or any moisture in the fur, it stays in the fur. So I don't know which way is the best. But one thing, again, with this new beaver stretcher, which tomorrow when there's more light, I'll show you. You can see there's already an inch gap between that fur and if there's another fur on there another gap so that's going to dry really really quickly plus i'll be able to hang it up i still got to put the wire on it but that was the only thing left and uh tomorrow i'll have the other pelt on there so i got three more beaver pelts to deal with i basically stapled that one i like the staple method it's quick to put on we'll see what it's like to take them off i'm sure pulling those staples out is going to be a pain in the butt but is it going to be any more in a pain in the butt than the the thumbtacks i don't know but what i do really quickly is i peg it with the thumbtacks or the, uh, uh, you know, the pin, pegboard pins, and just to get the rough uh, shape of it, and then I go around it with the uh, with the uh, staple gun. <laughs> uh, again, this beaver so far <coughs> uh, only took me uh, two hours all in. That's uh, skinned, fleshed, and stretched. Two hours in and again that's pretty much a perfect flashing uh, and there's a couple of little meatlets that always kind of hang back a bit but uh yeah you won't see those after about a week or so this is going to be like this is going to be like a piece of cardboard in about a week or so so this one's definitely going to make it to the fur tree looks good looks good um and it's a prime pelt yeah so the next three are going to be just as nice as this one or nicer uh especially if they're a little bit bigger and i could fit them completely <laughs> like that one will start to get tight a little on the edge there and um and a little the front legs were getting a little bit tight but uh not too bad i was able to tie the front legs last and and you know they're gonna they're gonna be okay like i mean that that's a that's that's gonna be a pretty presentable fur it's gonna look good uh, i'm gonna try to get more round again uh what you're doing with the these things is like you're not pulling the fur to the edge here unless it, you know unless it's slack what you're doing is you're going just like kind of like somewhere where you got a good grip where it's just taut enough that when you hang it it's sitting flat so what happens when it does dry the fur gets really dense where if you you pull it right tight tight to the edge if, if it's you know let's say like your your pelts when you lie it out it only comes to here and you try to pull it to here when it dries in you get like basically it thins out the fur so the idea is to keep fur density so try to go enough that it's it's taut and whatever like when you're when it's lying down if there's a bit of a gully in there no problem as long as it's not like a, a complete wave so there's no wave in this as you can see when it's hanging up uh it's still got a little bit of slack in it to allow for the drying because it is going to dry quite a bit so you can see there's quite a bit of slack in there right 
but when it dries the fur density is just going to be perfect it's not going to be stretched uh, you know like overstretched when you overstretch a fur a pelt it, it basically defeats the purpose a lot of people think of, you know if you can stretch it to the next size you'll get more money fur density a small pelt like this prime with beautiful four inches thick fur on it is going to get more than a pelt double the size that's just stretched to beyond belief so bigger is not always better you can only make them as big as they they, they are you, you know so i give enough slack uh, how much slack you give it's more of a um, that's more of an experience thing where how much slack like let's put it to you this way if you if you overstretch it like these stretchers here a beaver pelt would start to bend them if you over if you overstretch it because when it dries it would actually shrink enough to 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 you know put stress on that so you want it so that when it dries enough that it's not you know th there might be tension on it but not enough to to do anything so that's like i say maybe about see like there's maybe about an inch or two it's kind of like you know springy like that so when it's hanging up and down like that kind of gross but that one doesn't stink as bad but we'll find out by the morning how bad he is uh but when it's loose like that like i say by the time it dries up even if it dries up and, and shrinks like an inch all the way around it won't really matter because there's enough give there that it's just gonna you know thicken up the fur it's not gonna you know stretch the the fur and make it thinner so hopefully you guys understand what i'm talking about there but anyway there we go i'm pretty three more to go and then uh hopefully i catch some more furs tomorrow but uh tomorrow uh, those guys are getting out um i should fix this one tonight if i can but i'll have at least for four of these up at the other place and the second beaver blitzkrieg front oper going from operation trapper smacker whacker which he, this he was caught in this operation of the first beaver blitzkrieg and uh, we're going to go to the second front which is beaver munch face x trap smash down that that that's that one's going to haul out a lot of beavers so and i'm um, pretty much ready to go and then you know yeah there we go uh and the nice thing about these stretchers is the longest it takes is uh with a jigsaw is just cutting them out tracing them is pretty fast i got the stencil i've showed you that in previous videos uh i stencil it i can make a take a board like this sheet of plywood cut that with the chain uh the chainsaw the skill saw in a minute or two uh and then it takes maybe about 10 minutes or so or less uh with the stencil to uh do the uh all the circles on there for sizing that's just going to stay my sizing board and then the jigsaw part probably takes about half an hour or so to cut out all six rings uh per so yeah so it goes pretty good and then of course once you build it like that'll be good for the next 10 years you know what i mean like unless you step on it break it or something you build them once and that's it so yeah uh that's good like i mean i built these like five six years ago some of them are starting to fall apart <laughs> like that one there but uh, these won't fall apart because they, they can't fall apart so and they're a lot simpler that was just the rough idea and that's the scrap wood i had at the time and i had to use what i had but you can see this one's still you know and it's nailed together this one's not screwed together it's nailed together and it's actually holding up pretty good for considering it was made with green wood and everything like that but this is the way to go that is the way to go all right there we go